Rasmus, thank you very much for being here. Uh, would love to hear a bit about yourself. Maybe you just want to tell us a bit about who you are, what you're doing, and why you're having this event here today, what you're hoping to accomplish from the event today. Thank you so much. Uh, yeah, my name is Rasmus. I'm the Danish ambassador to Indonesia. Uh, I've been here now for about a year. Um, I'm a career diplomat, but has worked on climate change for a, a big part of my, uh, my professional career. Uh, I used to be the Danish uh, senior climate change negotiator before Paris. Uh, so, of course, the topic of today's event is something that I, I feel quite strongly about. And I'm very happy we can, uh, we can host it here at the Greenhouse. What we're hoping to achieve is really to, uh, to raise awareness of both the magnitude and the urgency of the problem among young Indonesian professionals. Um, Rasmus, I know that Denmark has a particularly progressive agenda as it relates to climate change. Uh, why do you think that is? Well, interestingly, uh, the Danish uh, energy transition, if you like, and our work on climate change uh, started many years ago. It's actually a, a result of the oil crisis in the, in the 1970s and 80s that uh, forced us to completely rethink the way we uh, produce energy. Uh, and of course, today we have um, a system where we have a very high uh, amount of renewable energy uh, in our energy system. And we have also worked a lot on energy efficiency so that for the past 30 years, uh, while we had almost a 50% uh, increase in our GDP, the energy consumption is more or less the same and our CO2 emissions have been reduced by 35%. Wow. So that's decoupling, if you like, yeah. of economic growth on the one hand and CO2 emissions and energy consumption on the other. And that's an example we would like to. Uh, uh, to tell others about. And is energy consumption the biggest focus for you right now? Here in Indonesia? Yes. Uh, no, we're working, of course, on, on many things as, as, as an embassy here, but we have a very large, uh, significant uh, energy program uh, with the Indonesian government uh, focusing on promoting renewable energy, uh, basically uh, teaching uh, the Indonesian uh, uh, technicians how to integrate a large amount of renewable. That tends to be a barrier that they are afraid they cannot integrate it. Uh, so that's one thing, but we also work on, on energy efficiency and not least long-term planning. Because if you want to transition or transform your energy system, it's a 20, 30 year perspective you're looking into. Wow. Are you finding a support system working with the, the government here? Do you feel that there's infrastructure in place to push environmental consciousness, sustainable operations? Uh, or do you feel it's just, that is still developing here in Indonesia? I think th there is, uh, of course, a, a certain support system in place. But I think there is also still maybe a little bit of lack of awareness, if you like, uh, of, uh, of uh, you know, the, uh, the good things, if you like, of, of, of for example, uh, renewable energy. There are a lot of myths that we are hoping to, to debunk, if you like. Uh, first of all, uh, the myth that uh, renewable energy and energy efficiency is very expensive. It is not. In Denmark today, uh, wind power, for example, is the cheapest uh, fuel uh, source available. And if you're a Danish politician, why would you choose something that is more expensive uh, uh, yeah. than, than wind? So it's not really only about climate change. It's also about choosing a long-term cost-effective solution. And, and that's one of the things that we're trying to convey. Really nice. Uh, let's talk about, so you talked a bit about renewable energies. How about solar? And is that something that you're seeing as a movement here or something you're pushing here? Yeah, that's that's clearly solar is, is perhaps probably the sort of the low hanging fruit here. Yeah. Uh, I think, again, there is this myth that, for example, coal fired power plants are the cheapest option for Indonesia, uh, whereas we're trying to say it is not. If you really look at factor in all the costs, especially the fuel cost, the cheapest option for Indonesia by far is solar power. Uh, and that is something that would have enormous potential uh, throughout the archipelago uh, to develop. Yeah, I, I find it interesting, though, that I haven't seen a huge emergence of private organizations in solar power specifically across Indonesia. And why do you think that is? Well, there's some regulation that is uh, is basically constituting a barrier. And there is also lack of awareness. I mean, if you just look out, we sit in this fantastic room where we can look out, uh, you know, on, on the skyline of Jakarta and you see all these uh, houses and it would be quite easy to install yeah. solar panels on the roof. And that would be commercially viable for the families. It would probably pay itself back within a span of two to three years. Wow. So what's not to like? But of course, if you go industrial scale electricity production, there are some barriers, especially here on Java. But on the eastern part of the island where your main competitor is not uh, subsidized coal, but actually diesel, then renewables have a very good business case. And that's something that we're trying to, to work on also commercially. So, so many young companies like ours do take environmental consciousness and operations very seriously. And we're certainly considering what our role is to play in mm. the country that hosts us here in Indonesia. What kind of words of encouragement or advice might you offer to younger companies like ours that are going down this path? 
I think in, in general, uh, companies can play an incredibly constructive role uh, in uh, promoting a, a green transition uh, of societies and economies. Um, we see some of the very big companies uh, in the world today uh, having uh, requirements that they only want to source 100% renewable energy, whether it's a Facebook, Amazon, Google, etc. But even smaller companies or service companies can do a lot, both on their own. They can take a look at their own operations and see if they can become more energy efficient, for example, typically in, in uh, the sky rises like this. There are a lot of uh, low-hanging fruits uh, where you could save a lot of energy with the equipment that would pay itself off uh, quite easily. And then, of course, you have, as we do today, uh, the opportunity to uh, raise awareness, uh, spread the message, and encourage others who are maybe not aware of, of, of the opportunities and, and, and the things that you can actually do to, uh, to create a better world. Got it. Rasmus, thank you very much for being here today. My pleasure. Cheers.